Hello, everybody, and welcome to my monthly Unapologetic Woman Hour. I'm really excited about this month as we're going to be diving deep on the topic of mental health. For a lot of you out there, you've probably heard a little bit about my story and my struggles with mental health with some misdiagnoses, uh, some oh, a bit of a little cray cray time in my life and why I actually do the work that I do. I've been starting these Unapologetic Woman Hour Facebook Lives for this whole year of 2019. And one of the main reasons that I decided to start it is to start to have real conversations. I have found nowadays we can use technology in a great way like we're doing here today. And sometimes it can be a way where we can isolate and also not be real or authentic. And so I wanted to be a catalyst to start to have more real conversations. Um, I am on a mission to allow all people to feel safe enough to express themselves. Whether they're having a good day or a bad day, we should be able to express ourselves. And currently right now with the world of mental health, a lot of people don't feel safe enough to express themselves. Uh, I was watching a TED talk and one of the guys that <clears throat> was on there speaking, he said, more people would be willing to talk about, I'm stuck in bed because I can't get, I broke my leg and I can't get out of bed versus I'm stuck in bed because I'm depressed. Most people wouldn't share that. So today, Tanya and I are gonna, our, Tanya and I are gonna really, really dive deep into this topic and start to unmask some of these biases, uh, some of maybe the shame that's around it and there could be someone out there that really needs this video. So in a moment, I'm gonna bring her on camera so we can start this conversation and really dive deep. I would love any of you, if you're here live, feel free to follow along, comment below. If you're watching the recording, also comment. You can tag us, we can still respond to you. We can keep this conversation going even after the live has been complete. If there's somebody in your life that you know really needs to hear this message, but you don't want to feel like you're pushing them or feel like you're intruding in any way, share it on your Facebook page and say, hey, I just saw this really awesome video. Uh, these two women were just talking unapologetically and authentically about mental health, and it was very refreshing, and I have hope for, for people out there. It's a great way. Sometimes if you just share in a way that you're expressing yourself, it can be the one thing that what that one person out there needs. So share the video, comment below, like and love, because we want to keep this conversation going. And I see that she's here, so I'm going to bring her on camera. And we're going to get... Hey. Hey there. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Welcome. I've been so excited to talk about about this topic. Yeah. So I'm really happy that we're able to to join here live and just keep this conversation going. So yes. I would love for you to introduce yourself to my tribe and tell them a little bit about yourself and you know what what you're all about, what your mission really is. Well, thank you so much. I love what you were saying about sharing because that's a new thing to me even. Um, you know, sometimes things will come up and I, I, I think I'm not gonna share that. But often when I do, it really lands with someone and it was what they needed to hear. So I, I find that for me too, I'll read something that just changes the momentum of my day. So definitely, um, sorry, that was a call. If you need to share or you feel inspired to share, I'm just gonna invite you to not hold back. Um, what I do is I help heal, overwhelm, depression, anxiety, stress, and I do that without medication. I do that with tools that are formed in um, a, a field, a burgeoning field called transformational psychology. And it's a blend of psychotherapy and neuroscience, NLP, a lot of the stuff that Tony Robbins uses, as well as quantum theory and um, some other really, law of attraction even, uh, uh, some other really cool pieces that affect change. So you can get from where you are to where you want to be and stop feeling stuck. And you, mm. you know how to do it. So... Um, yeah, it's really good stuff. It's changed. Hi, Cindy. It's changed my life for exponentially, like like jet fuel. Jet fuel. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and was there something that motivated you to get into this field 
that you wanted to share with everybody before we get really started into our topic? Sure. Great question. So I came from a very chaotic um, childhood. And actually now I see that that's kind of like a, um, a generational ancestral thing, but that's like a deeper topic for another time. Anyway, so up leveling, uh, trying to figure out how to uh, make peace within myself was just something I was always interested in. And I studied psychology and sociology in college, but I, life events um, actually propelled me to, to really find a way to um, deal and heal and just not just, you know, just not deal, but actually feel good and empowered. Um, so I would say it's a culmination. It, it, it was a chaotic childhood in many ways, not all bad, of course. Um, it was a, a divorce and a chaotic relationship there, which that's kind of a no brainer if I'm not updating any patterns yet. And then I, I actually lost a child. Um, where I'd say that was a big, big turning point. And that's what uh, catalyzed our conversation here specifically, is that the, uh, this is 20 years ago, the, um, there was a prescription to just take medication and there was something deep inside me. The, the word holistic and all of that wasn't out really yet in 99. And, but there was something deep inside me that said, no, there's, there's got to be some other way. I, you know, I have to find some other way. So that set me on this path in earnest. And then, you know, some other things that have happened since then that are really trying. I lost my parents um, and two other family members and some betrayals that were really, really uh, jolting. Um, just reinforce all this skill set and, and tools that I thankfully, thank God, have because I don't know where I'd be without them. Yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing. And I think that's how you and I really connected, too. I don't, we didn't really know each other's stories when we, we met, but I think our souls knew each other's stories because I had a, a lot of similar things occur to me. I was, I was misdiagnosed and put on a medication that actually, the easiest way to say it made me go crazy because it wasn't what my body needed. And so at that moment, I felt like I got labeled yeah. and that I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't Tracy anymore. I was Tracy with depression. Right. And, and that it was, it was a part of me. Right. And, and I felt it was, it was, a, it was very hard to navigate. Um, and growing up, I was always like, I was that one, or I was the crazy kid. Or as I look back, I'm kind of glad because it made life a little bit more fun. Right. But <laughs> you do um, make life fun. I know when we're, at, when we're together, it's, Lots Thank of fun. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But I never felt like I could fully express myself because I always was afraid of being judged. And so when I started to struggle, um, it ended up being a lot of hormonal problems that mm -hmm. caused my depression. Uh, I started to struggle and I didn't feel like there was anywhere where I could share. Uh, my family was supportive, but they just didn't understand it because they themselves weren't going through it. Mm -hmm. And then the doctors, they would hear, it was almost like they heard these little, yep. like they were, some of them are hypnotized. Yeah. They hear that one word and they're like, Boom. bam. That's You're in I a got. category. Yeah. Yeah. It, it literally only took that, um, that little moment uh, where they heard that I wasn't getting out of bed. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, bam, immediately. Right. Oh, you're depressed. Here's a prescription. And here you are. You're in Go this on your box. Way. Yeah. And <laughs> it's now your identity. It's part, it becomes part of your identity which Tracy, you and I know about one of the models is the change work is based on kind of like a glacier shape or a triangle. And at the top is behaviors beneath that is belief and beneath that is identity. And so when you have this identity that's reinforced through everything, through, through the media, even when your doctor in the white coat, which is a psychological cue as well, to anchor that identity in even more, it says that you're depressed. Oh, now I'm depressed. And so it's a life sentence instead of a situational normal reaction to what's happening. Yeah. So I really, yeah. And that. I think that's, I think that's where we're stuck right now. Would you say is that <clears throat> the de depression, anxiety, a lot of these mental health issues that are out there, instead of it just being something that's situational, it's being looked at that it's a part of you. It's an identity. It, you're saying it's a life sentence. 
versus some of these other things. Uh, it's just, it boggles my mind because I was talking to somebody and they have like IBS and all these like digestive yes, issues. Yes. And they're like, pardon my French. They're, they're like, I feel more comfortable talking about almost shitting myself than I would feel talking about uh, the, not being able to get out of bed. Brushing, in the morning. Yeah, or to that, me, yeah. that's crazy. It, yeah. Like that somebody can nonchalantly just talk about something like that, which, you know, is not the funnest thing to do. Right. <laughs> but that's and, less and stigmatized than it's less yeah. stigmatized. So, but it's still a situation. Somebody that has IBS is, is the same as uh, you know, somebody like me, I have, um, you know, I have cyclical depression. It's if my hormones get out of whack, exactly. that's how yeah. I feel. Yeah, yeah. So it's situational for yes, me yes. now that I, I have the education, the understanding, and I can listen to my own body. Beautiful. I'm that's... not letting other people tell me what I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to listen to. Beautiful. Yeah. That's what also I feel is that I learned that the, the authority on your health and your mental health any kind of health within you is your is yourself. You're the authority. You're the one with agency. And we, I didn't know that. I didn't know that until recently. But listening to your body, listening to your emotions, what you feel, there's a delicate, delicate chemical cascade that's going on. And if something gets, a, you know, just a little bit tweaked, it can cause a whole cascade of things. So <clears throat> depression or or uh, sadness or feeling blue or, you know, not being able to get out of bed. Sometimes, you know, that's something we need to listen to. And then when it, and then when it's, and, and resting will actually heal it. Uh, actually, there's a, a, a saying I love, it's depressed. Like somebody said, I am depressed. And even in that word, deep rest, right? Deep rest mm. is another way to look at that. So sometimes you need deep rest and the hormones will come back in balance. Um, and then you'll also be in tune with yourself enough to know when it's been too long for your liking and you need, you need some outside support because there's a lot of outside support and opening up this conversation is really important in inviting people to, to be less ashamed about that than, you know, digestive issues or other things that are con considered so embarrassing. There is, the, there is something I really want to share too. Yeah. Um, that, you know, when my parents just, the four family members passed in the last two years, which was such, I mean, talk about navigating an identity change. Um, and when I went to the doctor, because I was feeling so sad and anxious and just to check out, you know, my heart, make sure, you know, all the things are working, blood pressure, pulse, all that stuff's good. The initial response <clears throat> was to write me a script. And I said, no, that's okay. I don't want the script. And even in the follow-up since then, you know, every time the intake questions include, what medications are you on? None. Are, none? Yeah, none. Are you sure you're on none? Nothing. How about over the counter? No, I'm not on anything, you know? So I just, and I'm not knocking that either. There are times, absolutely, that we need, you know, whatever tools at our disposal. It's just, I feel like it's a delicate balance, just like our hormones and, um, we can be empowered to kind of like create our own recipe. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And thanks for sharing that. I, I think it's, it's it what you said, there's a time and place for everything and, and medicine has its place. And these other therapies also have their place. Mm -hmm. And when everything works together, yes, then someone's able to really receive the help and support that they need. You know, I'm not a be all end all for my clients. But if, if somebody's coming to me, you know, I worked with a lot of stressed, overwhelmed women, even the people that are getting body work for me, I can feel their yes. emotions in their tissue. Yeah. But then sometimes there's certain things that they're going through where I'm like, this isn't my scope of practice. Mm. You need to go here. Mm -hmm. And it's, cre I have found the one thing that got me out of um, that dark hole that I was in was I found my team as I called them. Beautiful. They were like my superhero team. Yes. And, and I had, you know, I had my life coach. I had um, my grief counselor. Yes. I had, um, I had the restorative yoga I used to go to mm. that really helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to a naturopathic doctor as well as a holistic psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. So I had my team. And if it wasn't for each and every one of them, I wouldn't have been able to 
to kind of get out of that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes there's this mindset now, and it's with everything, right? We want this quick fix mm -hmm. that I have found um, even in our, in our medical system, but I have also found it in other systems, sure, some yeah. of the holistic systems. Right. And it's like, this is the be all end all. Right. Absolutely. This is, you, you just need this thing. And it's just this one thing and it's going to fix everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, and sometimes it's finding your own recipe. Beautiful, yes. I agree. Would you agree with that? Totally. And I think that's where our, our growth and transformation and power and the next evolution, all of us, you know, women specifically here for this event and men, all of us that are on this journey, we're a bit of pioneering here. And, 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 and it can be really scary to pioneer. But what, what the invitation is to me and what you just so eloquently illustrated is such a great point is that there's a menu of things, right? We don't have to chop off any one thing and say, we're never using this again. Um, but right now it is lopsided and it can be lopsided the other way too. But so we can, the invitation here is to create your, or just keep adding things to the menu. You know, if, if, um, if exercise or yoga or a specific type of yoga, you check in with yourself. How do you feel after that? Does your day go smoother? Do you react better or not at all? Or, you know, um, massages, um, essential oils, uh, the food you eat is just, you know, that's the front line, but that's another story. Um, the food you eat, the sleep you get, that's another front line thing for uh, hormones and, and, and mental wellness. Um, so all these things, you can look at medication, you know, have it all on the menu, whatever's working for you, what works for you, what allows you to stay, cent stay centered and um, empowered. And when you get knocked off center and when you feel yourself spiraling, what are those tools that soothe you back and bring you back? Because you're not, you know, we're not going to never feel knocked off balance like that's the that's what life's about exactly right so <laughs> and that's another thing that you another point i like to 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 underscore you said like the quick fix kind of thing uh, whether it's in the in the medical field or the holistic side or whatever side it is that this one thing is just going to solve everything and do it really quickly let's do it today let's get it done already but the whole there's actually a lot of magic there's actually a lot of of, of gift in in the process and it's just something that you really don't want to bypass yeah it's a good point and i'd love your thoughts on this because i just kind of had a little aha mm. um i i was talking to my a massage client last night she's on the table and i'm talking and i'm kind of i can see some correlations between some of her her um, self-expression issues and some past trauma with her muscle tissue. Yeah. And she had been talking about, she had this, she came to one of my retreats. Right. And she had this like massive aha. Mm -hmm. She's like, I started to feel warm all inside. I could see life in a different light. Mm -hmm. She's like, it was the weirdest thing. I thought I was on drugs. Yeah. And I was like, well, you were high on life. Right. <laughs> but, but what I said is you, you came to a different level of consciousness. You have a different level of awareness now and it can happen. And she goes, yeah, and it was great for a while. And then everything went to crap. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, this is what I, I can share my story is when I started to become more aware mm -hmm. and have different levels of consciousness, anything that would stop me from really living in that had to come to the surface for me to clear. Yes. So uh, it's all that past stuff that yeah. maybe I thought I dealt with, right. but I really didn't. It's almost like, right, it all came to the surface. And I could either look at that as a blessing or look at that as a curse. But in this new level of awareness, now I have more skills and tools to clear, yes. clear it out. And it was a, for her, she was like, oh, I thought like I just lost it. Mm. I said, no, it's life giving you an opportunity to clean out yes. so that you can actually have, have more space. And that that's where I have found our challenges really are our greatest gifts because life would be boring. Like, wouldn't a movie be really boring if there wasn't a conflict? Sure. And wouldn't Maybe the night no be really, want... right. The contrast is what serves, you know, that's actually what, you know, on a metaphysical level, that's what we came for. The deliciousness of choosing, you know, if it was always day, 
if it was always sunny and it didn't rain, I mean, you can take that for granted. It's just the nature of, of anything. So the contrast is, is really serving to, to, um, to enrich us. And there were two things that you said, and oh gosh, I don't, I don't want to lose. Oh, the body. So the body work that you're doing, the body is actually, if we think about it this way, the body is a recorder, a record of the unconscious. And that's mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. yeah. And when you get body work, it's so important. I mean, I can't believe how I initially thought, I'm not getting, I don't, a massage, are you kidding me? Like, I don't have, that's a luxury and that's not for me. No, that's, that's, that's a healing modality and it's super powerful. I mean, you're working through the record of your unconscious when you're working in your body. Your, our bodies are actually our vehicles to, to transform and update, you know, eons of karma but that's another again that's another video so we could do lives for the whole rest of the year <laughs> <laughs> on all these topics well, let's, yeah if you have a topic if anyone has anything that they hear here and they would like us to talk about it more please please note it in the comments but so yeah um the other piece of it what you said was when your client felt like i lost it that happens to me all the time and it's a term another term we use i love these little terms because they're little touchstones that help me keep going, keep moving, like Dory, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. I mean, sometimes I say that to myself because it looks like I'm going backwards for crying out loud. But it's, the saying is, same devil, different level, right? So when you heal this one thing, it, it might look like you're going backwards when, it, when you slip back into it, but it's actually you're spiraling up, and you're going to revisit that on, a, on, a, on another level. But it's just deeper and deeper healing. So... It's nothing to be afraid of. And like you said, highlighted it so well, that you have more tools each time. Each time you have better tools and more tools and, and, and you see the difference again, back to the contrast. You see how you would have handled it a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, versus how you're handling it now. And you just keep getting stronger and stronger. And then you're able and in a position to help others more. So these things that are called self-care, these things that you put on your menu, no matter what they are, eating well, sleeping, hydrating, going to the doctor, taking your meds, if that's what you're doing, um, having a coach, having a therapist, having a grief counselor, uh, um, exercise, silence, meditation, all, put them all on the menu if they, if they feed you, if they feed your soul. And that self-care is not actually selfish. It's actually what is going to allow you to inspire anyone else and also, you know, walk through the valley of the shadow of death a step ahead. It, this way, I'll lead you. Have you ever had anyone a step ahead of you? They're not perfect, but they're a step ahead and they can say, I know, just go this way. And it's just such a, it's such a relief. Like I have truth bumps right now. I have goosebumps that someone else other than me is dealing with this or going through this. And they also know a way, you know, I should turn right here or I could turn right here and, and this is what happened for them. So, yeah, it's just, I guess the term is self-care, but it's really actually much more than that. Yeah, you know, it's, I've come to find it's a journey back home, like feeling, I you start, I use the term self-care a lot and I started to kind of shift that mm -hmm. in my messaging a lot because I find it's more feeling at home in your own skin, yeah. feeling at home in your own heart and feeling at yeah. home in your own life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was talking to my client about it and I said, each day we're just trying to find ourselves a little bit more. Yes. Trust yourself. And everybody is. Yeah. So when we think of something being selfish, it's really not selfish because that person next to us is on their journey mm -hmm. of trying to find themselves a little bit mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And if we band, like you said, I think it was highlighted very well, if we band together, it's a lot easier <laughs> to walk that really intense walk holding someone's hand or yeah. walking that nearby someone. And that's where I'm finding one thing that's missing with mental health, and I'd love your thoughts on this, is that because it doesn't feel like it's safe enough to express that we're maybe having a bad day or we're struggling, that think the silence is not allowing us to get the resources, to have the people, to, to even reach out to see that there are these tools, to see that there are these possibilities, that we get so isolated in the silence, and it's almost that shame kind of 
-hmm. it keeps everything really shut down is that if people felt safer mm -hmm. to express it that's almost to me it's it's the starting point mm -hmm. if if there's a safe space for somebody to talk about stuff mm -hmm. then that is the starting point for everything else to occur mm -hmm. everything else we've been talking about mm -hmm. but if somebody doesn't feel safe enough to talk about this stuff or feel safe enough to be who they are in that that place then nothing else can really can really occur because we really do need other people mm -hmm. we, We're on our own journey, but mm -hmm. we're here living this human existence with others. We really do need other people. Absolutely, and, yeah. and isolation really kills people on every level, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Yeah, definitely, for sure. I, so I know in our trainings and my trainings that um, just social experiments or even like records of orphanages and, and things like that, the behaviors that we have, as humans when we're not held or touched um, physically, yes. And also just not being in community. It's one of the, I don't have the statistic handy. And also, I also research statistics too. I just don't take them at their word. I, I've come to, that's part of my recipe. Do I believe everything I read um, or hear? A anyway, that was a side. Um, so one of the statistics that I do feel is resonant is that uh, the one of the bigger contributors to death as a senior citizen is being alone, um, yeah. losing that sense of community. So just to feel community, I mean, there is a balance, again, just like with anything else. There is a time, I know from my experience, that I do need to oh, yeah. be alone and go with oh, yeah. the process. It's just beautiful to know that when it's not has to be that, it doesn't have to be that way all the time. And that there are people I can reach out to and, and feel support from. So, it, again, it, the balance. just it doesn't, it doesn't have to be either or. Here we go. Another little tagline, right? It doesn't have to be either or. It gets to be both and more, right? <laughs> Infinite possibilities. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I've just – and that's great. You said community. I started kind of – I've been doing more events and getting people together yes, yes. in different ways so that they feel like they belong. They feel like they're not the only one going through something. Mm -hmm. It's pretty powerful just what can happen when somebody's just in the room and they're not even sharing, but they're listening. Beautiful. Yep. The amount of change work that can happen yep. with somebody. So these safe environments are so key and critical. And what I would say to anybody out there is when I was – when I was going through a lot of my stuff is I had to really evaluate the people I was spending time with. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, and on many different levels, even mm -hmm. people that are very loving and caring, caring towards me, they didn't have mm. the capacity to hold the space for me in the way I might've needed in certain mm. ways. Mm -hmm. And some people did. And I have come to find out when we are really empowered in knowing who our people are for specific things in our lives, mm -hmm. then you said it earlier, this, this, create, this amazing power of choice can create um, infinite possibilities with relationships and with our own, with our own kind of self-growth and, mm -hmm. and self-development. And I started to just coin it community medicine. It's, it's medicine when you're around yes. it can like-minded be people. Yes. And to your point, it can be medicine when you find your like-minded people, your tribe, so to speak. And it can be poison if you stay too long in a, in a negative dynamic. It can be. And it's not easy to leave a negative dynamic, especially if you've invested a lot or you've, you're very, you love people. Um, but the point of it is, again, getting selective. What you said was, I think that's super important if there's one thing that people take away from our time here now in this talk and this video is that be selective um, about everything, about what you read, about what you, you know, it's the whole hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. That's the whole momentum behind that. What you see on Facebook or the news, uh, what you listen to, um, It's country music. I loved country music. I grew to love it. It took a while. But anyway, eventually, eventually loved it. I lived in South Carolina. I had no freaking choice. It was like 97 <laughs> country stations and two other ones, which is the reverse of Philly. But anyway, 
I finally grew to love country music. And then when I was going through a really difficult time, I realized when I listen to country music, I, I am so depressed. It's, I mean, the lyrics are beautiful and they touch me to the core, but I'm ready to like just draw the blinds down and go to bed and cry my eyes out. So I had to stop listening to country music. That's just for me. It could be, you know, re relevant for anyone, someone listening. But so my point is what you watch, what you see, what you read, what you hear, what you say. You know, if you're talking about people, um, it's a low energy thing. I've found, too, that I'll bring my earbuds now. Uh, it's just something that happened organically. I can hear people talking about a conversation that, you know, is upsetting to me. I can put my earbuds in because I don't want to hear it. Um, like if I'm in a cafe, well, everything's place. that vibration. It's all affecting us. We just can't see it with the human eye. No, but and what you can't... they're starting to study it and, and prove that energy is everywhere. Well, what, what I think the things that are not visible are the realest thing. Like yeah. love. You can't see that. Uh, your energy in the day, you've got energy in the morning, maybe not at night or maybe do at night, but the things you can't see the heartbeat on an EKG, the things you can't see are the realest freaking things they're life force sunshine sunlight it's life force so what affects your life source when you read facebook or instagram just notice how you feel and do something that enhances the recipe to how you feel what you listen to whatever it is what you talk about whatever it is what you taste you know, if you love the taste of bread, which I ate bread last night, which, I don't know why I do this. I just, I love the taste of it, but the next day, you know, I feel it and I notice it. Um, so just things like that. What is the recipe of what makes you feel, feel good? Um, getting very selective and being around people, you know, Are you, is this person, is this group, because community is so vital and so important. And I've had to, you know, sh and that shifts sometimes. The, 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 the constellation of people changes. And that's not the end of the world. Don't panic. Um, but finding people that you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave them feeling really good or feeling recharged, regenerated, re-energized. That's, that's important. Yeah, I think everything you said is it's always this power of choice. And what are you, <clears throat> whatever environment you're in, does it make you feel good mm -hmm. or does it, not make you feel good and it it could be for some people out there that simple mm -hmm. in every aspect how do i feel in this moment yeah or how does the the consequence of this choice make me feel uh later on and the biggest thing i would say to people is i think that's the greatest takeaway here is just noting what you're choosing to to put yourself in front of but it is making sure you're not then judging yourself if you don't feel good. Mm. Uh, I have like a kind of an agreement, my clients, if they're doing like the deeper level coaching with me that they have to go through. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you yeah. agree to this. Right. And if I see you doing it as your coach, yeah. I'm going to yeah. lovingly shift you. Yes, yes. <laughs> is don't judge the judgment. Right. If we start to feel bad about ourselves or ashamed that we did it again, right? Right. Then if we shame the shame, we're stuck in it. It's a cycle. Yeah. Instead, can we listen to it? What are the messages that it's, it's there? And it, a lot of it's loving messages. It could be our body crying out for more love because it needs more nourishment. Uh, just like you said, with, like the depression or the anxiety or some of these other deeper emotional things could actually be giving us the messages that we need to hear. Yeah. And so if we can be open to the messages unattached to this judgment, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can really make a big difference. So I would say for, for anybody out there, whether you're really struggling with something uh, where it's a, a deeper level mental health or emotional thing, or you're just, eh, you're, you feel like life could be better. You're just yeah, feeling like you're, you're point. Yeah. stuck on that neutral ground. This mm -hmm. is a tool for everybody. Mm -hmm is the second we judge the judgment, we get stuck in our tracks, we'll never be able to move forward. Mm -hmm. So when we notice things are occurring, it's right uh, in our training, it was what, curiosity is a cure for judgment? Yes. 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 And that is so, it has evolved to me to be, um, because I would feel badly when I judge something. 
even, you know, of course I'm still working on judging myself, still do that. Um, a girl. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, but I notice it now. And then I notice the judging of the judging, you know, it can be funny actually, you can get it comical, but when I would judge, you know, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. I don't want to spend more time with these people. I actually want to spend less time with them. I would feel guilty. And I would feel guilty about judging. I'm not saying I'm better or worse than anybody else. You know, that wasn't, so then the guilt would come. But a way that I got to that is like the curiosity is the, the cure for judgment. Along those lines, what I got came to and landed on was I'm discerning. I'm discerning. If I start using the word, and this is the power of NLP, neuro-linguistic programming. If I start using the words discerning instead of judgment, I no longer feel guilty. So when I, you know, say, oh yeah, I'm discerning, you know, who I want to spend my time with tonight, or, you know, I'm discerning if I want to go to that thing. Or I'm discerning if I want to be on the phone for a half an hour with, because time's the most precious resource that we have. I'm discerning if I want to read this Facebook story or watch this, you know, Instagram video. It's, I don't feel guilty anymore. I'm not hurting anybody's feelings. And I think a lot of women that we work with, Tracy, are empathic and they, they, they feel guilty like me for other people's experiences and, you know, somehow it's our fault or our responsibility that someone else is not happy or could be happier, et cetera. So being able to not feel like I'm hurting them it, because I'm discerning something for myself is, is, was a big point for me and added to my tools and my menu really powerfully that it's not a guilty, it's not something to feel guilty about. It's just, it's just a, a really important choice. It's what the name of this Facebook Live is, right? Being unapologetically you. Yeah. Um, nice. We, we sometimes, those nasty thoughts or those, um, we feel bad about ourselves or they come in. We have to just be open to, to the meaning, um, open the, to what it, it's trying to tell you versus a meaning you think it is. Be open to what it is. And, we all, we're all humans. And so sometimes we don't behave the best way possible, mm -hmm. but we can use it as a lesson or we can use it as shackles. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's ultimately, yeah. it's ultimately our choice. And it's a perfect way to kind of bring this full circle and close in this topic of being unapologetically yourself. Uh, what would you like to share with people? With, we talked about some takeaways here, but when it means to be unapologetically you, what does that, what does that term mean to you? Good question. Okay. So what, and I find things are meaning, like they're evolving meanings to me. So this is a dynamic meaning. It could mean something else more rich or nuanced later. For me right now, being unapologetically me is, uh, owning, uh, my gifts and sharing in a way that I don't feel wrong or um, guilty or, or bad or like I'm leaving someone else behind. Um, it's feeling, trusting myself. It's trusting myself more and more. And that's a conversation that, you know, I've learned to get into you know, what checking in and what is that feeling mean? I never did that before. I actually did a video on this that I was going to post tomorrow. Um, but what do I feel and, and why do I, not and necessarily why, but what do I feel and what is it telling me and what's the message underneath that and what's the message underneath that and what's the message underneath that until there's something in my gut into my, you know, my body, the record of our unconscious that says, mm, that's it. And it's like something that's not even language. You can't even language it because it's a, mm, you know, that is being unapologetically me. And it's respectful of everybody else's experiences and choices. Yes. Being ourselves is actually the most respectful thing we can do for other people. Mm -hmm. yes. Even in that moment, if they don't like it, yes. it's giving them permission to be themselves too. Beautiful. That's right. 
Agreed. And I, you're, you hit the, what is it? The nail right on the head. Yeah. That's the stage. yeah. Uh, that is the underlying work uh, is the trust of yourself. Mm-hmm. It's the, all the work that I do. It, it's behind this being unapologetically yourself. It's this journey of, right. I say coming home to yourself, but it's really mm. trusting. Mm-hmm. And that isn't something you're going to find in um, anything else, whether it be the supplements you're taking or the, the food you're eating or the people you're around. Those are all great things, but they initially come from you trusting yourself to make the choice to be in the experiences you want to be in. Mm-hmm. And when we trust ourselves, then we're always making the right decision. Mm-hmm. Yes. If your heart is good, if your heart is a good heart, you're making the right decision. If you yeah. can check in and say, like, from your heart. And you know what? You're evolving, too. So your decision today might not be as optimal for the you you're becoming, say, in a month or six months or whatever the case may be. So, but if you're coming from your heart, um, you can trust it. A good heart, you can trust it. That's right. Well, I think that's an amazing way to end. And would there be um, anything, uh, last words or anything you want to share? And kind of, especially, I would say the people out there that might be struggling with mental health or are feeling, even just they're having down days and they're feeling like they, they don't know who to reach out to or they don't know what to do. Is there any last little, little nuggets of wisdom you wanted to share before we close? Sure. Uh, well. I would say or invite you to just be kind to yourself. If you're going through a difficult time, please know that it's a sacred, sacred, sacred time. And it might feel awful. Uh, You're not alone. And be kind to yourself and see if you can get into communication with yourself. Even 0.01 or 0.00001% more than you did yesterday. Because you'll, you'll, uh, you could be amazed at what happens when, when you start to check in with yourself and also know that you're not alone. Reach out, whatever is your comfort level, you know, if it's just being on a, on a a community board, on a social media site, that check in though with what, like if you follow a hashtag, does reading those posts, make you feel better or worse. And we're going for feeling better. Um, so you can do it like as low key as that. You can, you can also reach out to Tracy or myself. I'm not sure Tracy you probably do have, I have a call, a complimentary call and you can get on the phone with me and we can yep, unpack too. stuff. Yeah. Tracy does too. So whatever your level of comfort is, whether it's, you know, kind of just hanging low, Lay, laying low and under the radar and checking out hashtags or going to a group or, or making a call and being on the phone one-on-one. Um, that would be just kind of like a life raft. I mean, Lord knows I've had so many life rafts. Mm-hmm, my God, like <laughs> life rafts, light houses, uh, rescue crews, cleanup crews. I mean, Hazmat. <laughs> right. Hazmat. <laughs> With their alien outfit on. Absolutely. So, and, and why, maybe some humor. Humor. I love humor. That helps me too. It changes the chemistry in your body. So, um, yeah, just check out the menu of, of ways you could reach out and pick one. I like that. I think that's a great way to end is, and I think for people, when you're in the midst of it, sometimes it's hard to remember what to do. I, I, this happens with a lot of my clients. They're like, I totally forgot about that tool. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a better state, Mm -hmm. when you're in a more of a grounded state, Mm -hmm. write out your menu, Mm -hmm. write out, get clear on your toolbox so that you have it as a resource for when you're in a more of a, a down state Mm -hmm. or you're not feeling as well, or you're, you're super anxious or things are in overwhelm. Yeah. I want to know where that toolbox is. That's such a great, excuse me for a second, because I want to show you it's in my wallet. Hold on, I'm going to do this one-handed. So I have this, like, honestly, like this little menu of what makes me feel joyful. I have to put it in there because I, 
you know, it's when I don't have my wits about me, so to speak, or as much so, there it is, and I can refer to it and see. So, yeah, it's a great tool. Great. Great. And yeah. that can work for anybody, whether you're really struggling or you're just having a bad day. Yep. And that's the great, that's the great thing is these tools and these resources work for whatever level you're at. And I mean, we're both on this mission to, to really end a lot of this bias and, and judgment and shame around mental health, because it is, it's, it's just, as you mentioned before, it's a situation. Mm -hmm. It's not your identity. Mm, it's and, right. Exactly. When I lost the baby, it was not my identity. It became my identity for a while. And it's a fractal of who I am now, which actually informs how I can help others as the gift, as one of the gifts. But I think for me, for me, speaking for me, if I would have gone on medication, I think I, I just had this intuitive sense I'm going to be stuck in this day, like Groundhog Day. And I want to, I want to, you know, I want to push through this. So, yeah, it's a... I love it. Yeah. And it's, it is what you said. And it's, this is, um, my final words as we close <laughs> is this is when you're going through stuff, whether it's grief, loss of a loved one, feeling down, you're just extremely overwhelmed. Um, what Tanya said is true. It's sacred. Mm. It's sacred time. I say it's whatever you believe in spiritually, but it's like, it's, it's God giving you a gift mm -hmm. to grow stronger, mm -hmm. just like the muscles mm -hmm. need to tear mm -hmm. before and then repair to get stronger. Mm -hmm. That's the same way that, that we work on all levels. And so use it as sacred time. One, use it as sacred time. It is a sacred time. Use it as sacred time and look at it like that because it, it truly, truly is. One other thing before we close, I know we've talked a lot about situational uh, events and feelings. And also, I have felt just freaking so blue, heartbroken for no reason. Like, there was a weight on my chest. I felt that, too. So I know that there is, you know, there are instances where people can just feel freaking depressed and not know why, right? But um, there is, there are a plethora of tools. And Tracy and I are versed in many of them, but more and more are evolving all the time. And... It's different than it was. We have so much more resources available. And just know that whether it's situational and it's, you know, somebody had passed away or it's something that's just lingering and you're not sure what your body is, you know, holding, mm -hmm. if you need any help, we are, we're here to help you. Um, that's right. And don't be worried about uh, feeling shame about reaching out yeah we've all had our hazmat crews and our <laughs> life preservers and our, <laughs> our cleanup crews uh and you know we've gone through it and so it's a gift i found it the work i get to do is a gift it's totally when somebody can agree when somebody can be vulnerable with me and share some of their deepest deepest sorrows yeah. and those dark places where it's almost like that soup can in the back of the cabinet that's collecting dust yeah when they can share that with me, it's a gift. And for anybody out there that's watching this, realize the people that are out there that are doing the work we're doing, whether it's the coaching work, it's, it's mental health counselors, it's therapists, it's yeah. even people in any other realm, yeah. we see it as a gift. And when you're out there reaching for support, if you're getting a feeling that that practitioner, that yeah. person doesn't see their profession or what they do as a gift, find somebody else. Yeah, it's an honor. It is. It truly is an honor. Yeah. I've got, I had goosebumps when you were talking. It is a gift. Well, thank you yeah. for sharing in this conversation. And yeah. I wanted to just check in to see if there's anything you wanted to share, either free resources, a way to connect with you a little bit further, or anything you have up and coming with my tribe. Beautiful. Thank you. So the way to connect with me, there's a link. Um, I, I'm trying to think where you could find it. It's find your peace. There's a link where you can schedule a call. Or just PM me, private message me, um, if you feel I can support you in any way. Also, um, Tracy and I, I do a retreat to Italy every year. Next year, 2020, um, in September, we haven't selected the dates yet, but we'll keep you posted, and Tracy's going to be along with me on that retreat. Five people have already um, reserved their spots, so we'll have about five to seven more. 
And if you wanted info on that, Tracy or I have a website we could, we could point you to. But just let us know. Um, and just know that, that you're not alone. That's the most important thing. You're not alone. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, will you share the, at least a link to your website or something in the comments so they can find you? Or Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be thank great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That'd be great. And keep this conversation going. This yeah. is, you know, we're here live, but share this video with people. As, as we mentioned, it's, it's really important that, um, right, somebody might see this video and watch this versus a video that's going to make them feel down and depressed. Right. Exactly. And this could literally be a catalyst for something Changing. These conversations have that ripple effect. They do. And if you're if you're coming from your heart, you share from your heart. It, it there's nothing bad that can happen. Kindness really does help help with everything in life. Yep. Yep. So thank you, Tanya, for joining me today. Thank you, everybody that joined us live. And again, tag either of us in comments below, even after the live, if you have any other questions for us. We're we're more than welcome. More, we're more than, than happy. More than happy. More to than help. happy. Yep. To help and to answer any questions. Yes. Absolutely. Right, bye, love. Have a great day. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> well thank you all for, for joining me today. And again, as I had mentioned, if anything pops up, you have any other questions, you can always just let me know. And if you're not a part of my Tracy's Total Wellness community yet, uh, there is a link. I'm going to put it below. Join the community. I, I give gifts. I give resources. Just as we said, I help you to craft and create your own toolkit, your own recipes in a way that is empowering. And so be a part of the community. Uh, I would love to have you. Uh, virtual communities are great, and I can be that for you here. And then I can help also help guide you into some local communities as well if you're interested. Um, I'm doing local retreats in Orlando. Uh, I have an Equinox fall event coming up on September 14th. We're going to get under the harvest moon and really nourish and heal ourselves from that physical all the way to that soul level. If you want more information, you can find the event on my Facebook page. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. And remember, trust yourself and always be unapologetically you. Bye-bye, everyone.